Hi everyone, this is Julie. Thank you for stopping by for another video today. This video focuses on the nutritional guide. Sometimes people want to know why the nutritional guide is made up of the items it's made up of, why those and not others. And there is a specific reasoning behind this, which Dr. Sebi explained in an interview. Dr. Sebi was interviewed by Sharon Ross, who visited the Usha village, and she asked some pretty good questions, and this was one of them. So let's hear what Dr. Sebi had to say about how he came up with the nutritional guide. How do I arrive at what? At the food? On the nutritional guide. From the nutritional guide? Yes. Very good question. In fact, that is key question. What we have yet to understand that there has been a gross violation in the cosmic arrangement of things, how things originally were put together by life itself. We call that nature. In nature, you did not find Arabs in Alaska, nor Africans in Europe. The line of demarcation was clearly drawn, meaning that each cell, each cell that represent human beings on this planet. We represent a cell as African people. I am not an Eskimo. I am not an Arab, neither am I a Chinese. Understanding that, there comes a food with the gene structure of the individual and you know this occurs in the human body the human body could easily be considered a prototype of this whole arrangement this human body in the human body you have iron cells you have calcium cells you have cells that are made up of phosphorus and zinc cells that are made up of carbon and copper. So as we look at this difference in genetical predispositions, we find that there's a food that is also associated with that cell. You do not feed the cells of the blood calcium. You feed it iron. So when you feed black people, you have to understand his gene. What is it that is found or was found in his environment originally? You did not find rice and beans and chicken and hogs and pigs. So understanding that these things didn't exist on the continent, I decided to look into the organic world. And as I travel to various countries in Africa, I find that the food is still there. But the, we have been invaded with foreign substances and foreign philosophies that that was diffused. But yes, I arrived at the nutritional guide by selecting the food that is most consistent with the human body. Excellent. But there are specifics within that arrangement. Like in the case of Caucasian people, Caucasian people could digest lactose. Not so for African people. We cannot. Right. And the reason for that is not that we are better or worse, 
we just happen to be different. We haven't treated that difference. We have not. Yes. We talk in terms of good and bad, up and down. We never talk in difference when I am different. My food should be different. Yes. That's how I arrive at it. The key things to point out is that the nutritional guide take into consideration our original home and the foods that are present there. Also, the fact that we are genetically different in some ways to other peoples of the world. Today we eat foods that are found in Africa, but they did not originate in Africa they came from other places so even some of the foods that are eaten in africa the africans will say these are african food they did not originate there uh, such as cassava which is very popular in africa so it is necessary for us to look at the foods that came from our original environment before the infiltration, before the hybrid foods came in and see what we were eating, foods that were indigenous or that are indigenous to Africa. And as Dr. Sebi noted, those foods still exist there, even though there are many other foods that have been brought in that are not for our gene pool or they do not aid us in terms of health and wellness and that factored in the decision as to what foods were to be included or not included in the nutritional guide. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Visit the blog theafricanmineralbalance.com. Ta-ta!